everybody, it's Amanda Stanley here from Lines Tooth Wellness and I'm going to demonstrate how to make an infused oil for you today. So infused oils can be used for lots of different things. You can use it even as a food for salad dressing. You can use it as body oil, massage oil. Um, you can add it to salves, balms, uh, lotions. Um, you can use oils for, again, topical or internal use depending on how you want to use them. So um, very versatile. As far as the kinds of oils you can use, you can basically infuse any oil, um, any herb into any oil. I prefer to use the hardier, more shelf-stable oils, for instance, um, extra virgin or um, organic always um, for everything that we use, um, but uh, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. But today I decided I'm going to use extra virgin um, organic coconut oil. Um, it's not liquid at room temperature unless you live in a really warm climate. So I had to melt mine, um, which is right here, just under low temperature, just so it, I got it to a liquid. So it will solidify um, if you're in a cooler zone, but we'll get to that uh, point of the demo in a moment as far as how to work with this more solid oil. So really any oil goes, but again, the sh more shelf stable ones are the olive oils, the coconut oils, um, and then from there on you're kind of taking a little bit of a risk just because some oils will go rancid more easily, but you can do almond, avocado, sesame, um, you name it, you can infuse your herbs into it. So today we're going to work with um, fresh violet. You want to make sure to uh, put your, get your mason jar ready, whatever size you choose. We're doing the folk method of infusing here, so um, there isn't any specific size you need to follow for this recipe. So whatever size you want to use, get your label on here. So I've labeled this fresh violet. Um, and then I've abbreviated extra virgin um, coconut oil that I've infused it into. And of course the date, about a month from now, which is when my oil will be ready um, to strain. Now I'm going to be talking to you about a couple different ways to infuse the oil, but right now let's just go into the nitty gritty of getting the ingredients all mixed up together. So um, I've got some fresh violet here and I've put it in an old uh, salad bin I saved from buying some greens, some Olivia's greens. These are really great to store your fresh herbs in um, if you can't get to making the medicine right away. So I've got fresh violet leaves and flowers. So basically what I'm gonna do is just grab a handful of them. And because these are such a delicate um, plant and flower that I can just kind of break them open with my fingers. I don't need to use scissors or a knife. And just um, really put intention into it and be grateful as I'm making this and um, put my own love and hopes for what I'm going to be using this oil for because our consciousness, our awareness, our love, our good thoughts and affirmations are just as important um, to add to our medicine making um, than just the plant material itself and it's of course important to honor the plant and its spirit and its potent medicine that it offers us. Um, violet is a really potent medicine, um, especially for breast tissue and lymphatic, um, the lymphatic system within the body. So I'm focusing this infused oil um, specifically around breast health. Um, breast massage is a really important thing that I think everyone can benefit from, no matter if you're a um, man or woman, because we have so much lymph that filters through the breast tissue and a lot of it gets stagnated because the lymph itself does not have a pump that moves through, it does not get moved around like the blood does, um, but it just kind of hangs out until we move. So exercise and massage and things that um, physically move our lymph are the only way that our lymph gets cleared and moved along. And of course drinking water helps. Um, so it, the more touch we give our breast tissue, um, the more massage we really give our whole body, the better. And Violet's extra little medicinal twist and magical twist is that it helps to release blockages in the lymph, but also helps to dissolve growths in the body. So whatever um, might be going on in the breast tissue, maybe you have um, a history of um, fibroids or a little cyst growing on in uh, the breast. You can also um, use this infused oil as a belly massage or um, you know a reproductive lower abdominal massage because it can help to break up uterine fibroids and uterine cysts as well. So this is a really fantastic, very potent medicine for dissolving growths of all kinds. And it's just a very soothing, um, lovely skin soother 
um, for really any area of the skin. So violet is just such a magical and potent plant. So beautiful. A wonderful uh, green just to eat throughout the spring as well, especially now because it's so much more tender and sweet. Typically you find the purple or light, uh, light purple or white flowers. So really I'm just filling this all the way to the top, pulling out pine needles that I find along the way, giving it thanks, sending my love into it, honoring the amazing green nation that is so available to us and so willing to help us. A few more handfuls here. Fresh is always best. You can also infuse oils with dry plant material, but it's springtime here in New England, so I'm taking advantage of fresh, fresh stuff. So my intention for the coconut oil, because we're having some really warm days here in Newmarket, New Hampshire, is that I'm going to do a solar infusion. So that's literally what you think it is. It means using the sun to help break up the plant material within the oil and to help the oil absorb the medicinal properties of the violet leaves and flowers. So I'm basically, in a moment, after I continue to fill this up, I'm going to pour my oil in all the way up to this jar, to the top of the jar, and then once I've poked all the air bubbles out and sealed it tight, which I'll show you in a moment, I'm gonna find a sunny spot out in my backyard to put that jar for about a month. And I'm gonna let the sun do the work for me. So you have to pray for some warm days with the solar infusion, some sunny days, but I have a pretty sunny spot back there and I'm pretty certain I'll get what I want out of it. You can also do a crock pot method where you fill up your crock pot with water just about in, into uh, an inch from the top of your mason jar and just submerge your jar into that warm water. Um, Keep your crock pot set at just 100 degrees and under, because you don't want to overcook your oil. And let that sit in there for a good six to eight hours. That's kind of the quick method when I really, I can't wait around for the month. You can certainly use the crock pot method that way. And giving your jar a good shake, just with your hands, pulling it out of the, the crock pot and shaking it, kind of helping to break up the plant matter and the oil and help the extraction process and then stick it back in for another couple of hours. Making sure you're really monitoring the heat though because you, don't really, you really don't want to go over 100 degrees. You will kill a lot of the components, constituents. You'll cook them out of the plant if you do so. So that is just about full. Got my coconut oil here, so I'm gonna just Pour it right in. Hopefully I melted enough. I may not have. I might have to... Yeah, I didn't quite melt enough and that's okay. I can still finish the demo without it. So you want to fill the oil up to just about an inch from the top of your jar. Then you're gonna grab a chopstick or something similar to poke it around. So you're gonna really wanna poke, poke, poke your plant material and get out any and all air bubbles. You don't want any air bubbles, especially in infused oils because they're a lot more susceptible to mildew and mold and um, micro growth if air gets into this. We don't want any space available in here. So as you can see, I'm gonna need more oil here. I thought I had enough. But you'll want to fill the oil after you've popped all your air bubbles. You can actually give a little slap on the bottom here. You're gonna fill it all the way up to the tippy top to the point where when you cap it, you are going to spill the oil over the top. And again, you're not gonna have any air bubbles. It's like totally sealed shut. There might be a couple little stray ones and that's okay, but you're totally sealing your, your jar completely shut. Then, again, you can choose either method. I'm going to do the solar infusion where you find a super sunny spot to put this outside. Again, if it's capped really tightly, you don't have to worry about rainstorms. I've never had an issue with that. Um, again, going out and visiting your oil 
I would say at least, I like to do it once a day, at least once a week to take it, shake it, wipe it off, wipe any dirt off and any um, condensation or moisture and just give it some love, give it your good intention, um, continuing to honor and thank the plant matter that's in there for you. Um, and then you will strain it um, in a six to eight week. So you, of course you will have already marked that date on your label, mine is going to be June 6th. And because I've chosen coconut oil, and it's going to be in the direct sun in a pretty warm spring so far, um, I'm not going to have to worry about it being hard. It's going to melt. It's going to be constantly being heated. Maybe at night it'll get a little bit cooler, um, but so it won't be a problem. Um, so you don't really have to think about that issue unless you're using coconut oil like me. You can use olive oil or, again, any other oil, being mindful of the shelf's um, stability rate is a little bit higher. Uh, for olive oil and coconut oil. Um, but otherwise, you just let it sit, you let the sun do its work, and then you'll strain it with some cheesecloth and a funnel, something like this. You can get cheesecloth at any grocery store. You just cut a big hunk, pretty thick, place it in the, um, the funnel here, and then have another mason jar, clean, sanitized, and ready to pour this into, making sure that none of the plant matter gets transferred, but it's all getting strained out from the cheesecloth. Then you will store your freshly pressed infused oil in a dark, cool place. You can even leave it in the fridge if you want, although I won't be doing that because I'm using coconut oil. It'll be hard to use. Although an added perk, which is the reason why I was playing with coconut oil, is that it does go solid in cooler temperatures. And in that way, it becomes a balm. You don't have to add beeswax. You don't have to add any sort of thickener. It already is. So it's a lot more easily applied if you want um, you know, like an actual lip balm or salve type of consistency. Coconut oil will do that on its own in a specific temperature. So that's one of the perks of coconut oil, depending on why you are infusing your oil. So, um, again, you can use a crock pot version, which is just submerging your mason jar an inch from the top in water that's being heated by your crock pot. You leave it on t a temperature below 100 degrees. And usually between six and eight, even push it to 12 hours of marinating and macerating in that warm water, that just under hot, hot water, um, will again infuse the medicinal herbs into the oil. You can take it out every hour or so, wipe it clean, shake it, and then submerge it back again into the water, um, and that'll do the work for you. Again, similar thing, once the time frame is up in the crock pot, you pull it out, you strain it into a nice clean mason jar with your cheesecloth, with your funnel and keep it in a, a dark cool place to store. Make sure you label it with the date that you strained it. Um, I don't really use preservatives too, too much because I use my oils up pretty quickly, but you can always add um, a white sage, dried white sage, like the kind you burn for smudge. You can put a couple leaves in there um, into your oil to help fight off any microbes that might be growing there to kind of ward off um, any molds. Uh, you can put a couple drops of vitamin E oil into your mason jar with the oil in it. Um, you can use essential oils if you wanted to scent your oil. If you're using it externally for your skin, you could do that. Those are all natural preservatives. Otherwise, just keep an eye on it. You will know when it's gone bad. It will smell terrible, and there will be this kind of foggy cloud floating in the middle of it, um, and it will be absolutely noticeable and apparent to you that it's gone bad. So just keep an eye on it. Again, if you're keeping your um, oil stored in a dark, cool place, and you've kept all moisture out of it during the whole process, um, it will keep a pretty good length of time, um, at least a year to two years, um, maybe longer if you're lucky, but hopefully you'll be using it more uh, frequently so you won't even have to worry about it. Thanks so much for tuning in on my folk uh, tradition way of infusing oils. If you have any questions, please don't ever hesitate to contact me at lionstoothwellness.com. Have a beautiful day and happy oil infusing.